Today I want to talk a little bit about VMC. Uh, let's try that again. Today I want to talk a little bit about VMC. What it is, uh, where it comes from, and uh, why we need to know it. We'll talk more about the various VMC factors in later videos. For now though, uh, VMC. What is VMC? Well, VMC, properly written, is a speed. It is the uh, speed below which the rudder can no longer overcome asymmetric thrust. What does it stand for? Well, it stands for minimum control airspeed. And it's just a V-speed like any other. For example, uh, V-rotate or V-SO stalling speed in the dirty configuration. or V, um, uh, if you're in a jet, V1, uh, commit speed, or V flaps extend. So VMC is just a speed just like any of these other speeds. And we'll get rid of that. And uh, so what's the importance of VMC? Well, VMC is only important to a multi-engine airplane, and uh, it's only important when you're single engine. So let's say that we have a multi-engine airplane here. Draw a multi-engine airplane. And uh, let's say that you've got an engine here, and you've got an engine here. Now let's say that one of these engines goes bad on you. We're going to say that the left engine has just failed, and so now the right engine is the only one operating. The right engine is generating thrust, the left engine is not. And as a result of that, the right engine is going to try to turn the plane to the left. Because of asymmetric thrust, the right engine turns the airplane to the left. This uh, force right here that I've drawn is asymmetric thrust. Now, how do we oppose asymmetric thrust? Well, we oppose asymmetric thrust during an engine failure by using the rudder. So we step on the rudder and by stepping on the rudder, we generate a force that turns the nose of the airplane to the right. So the asymmetric thrust of the engine is trying to turn the airplane to the left. The force of the rudder is trying to turn the airplane to the right. Now, the rudder is an aerodynamic control surface. And what that means is the rudder requires airflow in order to operate. So when airflow goes over the rudder, the rudder is able to create a force which turns the tail to the left, which turns the nose to the right. That's how the rudder works. The more airflow going over the rudder, the more airflow going over any aerodynamic control surface, the more effective it is. So if this airplane happened to be going forward at, say, 200 knots, the rudder would be much more effective because it would have more air flowing over it than if the uh, airplane happened to only be flying at 100 knots. Less air flow over the rudder equals less rudder force. When the rudder has less force, it's less able to oppose the asymmetric thrust of the engine. So, the more air flow you have flowing over the rudder, the more available rudder power you have. There is a certain amount of rudder power that you need in order to overcome the asymmetric thrust of the engine. If you don't have enough airflow going over the rudder, you, ru you will not be able to oppose the asymmetric thrust of the engine even if you push the rudder all the way to the floor. That particular speed, that speed that you have to be going a certain however fast in order to have your rudder be powerful enough to oppose asymmetric thrust is VMC. Minimum control airspeed. So, let's say that you're flying along and say your aircraft, you've got your aircraft with a couple of engines, engine here, engine here, and we're going to say that one of them failed. We'll say that the left engine failed. So you have a turning tendency to the left, asymmetric thrust. Uh, try that again. There we go. Asymmetric thrust. And we'll also say that the airplane is flying, 
the rudder. Uh, you step on the rudder. We'll say that the airplane is flying at a speed of... Oh, we're flying at a speed of 80 knots. And we're going to say that VMC in this airplane happens to be 75 knots. Under these circumstances, with your current speed being 80 knots, and your VMC being 75 knots, you will have enough rudder power to overcome the asymmetric thrust, and your aircraft will be able to fly in a straight line. Now let's say that you slow down. Uh, we'll cross that out. Let's say that your current speed is now 70 knots. Your VMC is still 75, but your aircraft slows down to 70 knots. There is no longer enough airflow over the rudder for the rudder to have enough power to overcome the asymmetric thrust of the engine. And for this reason, your engine is going to turn you to the left, no matter how much rudder you use. Even if you use all the rudder that you have, even if you push the rudder pedal all the way to the floor, the engine, the asymmetric thrust from the working engine, is still going to turn you, because the rudder will not be able to oppose the asymmetric thrust of the engine. So, VMC is the speed below which the rudder can no longer oppose the asymmetric thrust of the engine. Flight above VMC is fine on a single engine. Flight below VMC is going to result in a loss of control. The airplane will be banking and yawing without the ability of the pilot to stop it using only the rudder. Now the pilot can control uh, the turning of the airplane using other methods, but we'll get to those in other videos. For now, VMC is the speed below which, using only the rudder, the pilot cannot oppose asymmetric thrust. And once you've got that, you've got a basic understanding of VMC.